on your first day at school there is one thing you forget. You forget, usually, that it ever happened. And that is the first time you have lunch. The first time you queue up, go into the dinner hall and eat. The first time you meet the dinner ladies. So, I went through this, I queued up, I went into the dinner hall, I sat down, I got my lunch box out, I had a little sandwich, chocolate bar, little drink, and I think, ooh, what shall I eat first? Which shall I, shall I have? And I decide, I'll have the chocolate bar. You there, bar? What are you doing putting that chocolate bar in your mouth? You put that chocolate bar down, boy. You put it down and you eat that sandwich first. Always eat your sandwich first, boy. But, but, I want to eat this first. I want to eat the chocolate bar. Oh no, boy. You don't eat the chocolate bar first. You eat the sandwich first. You put that chocolate bar in your mouth and I will flog you around the playground. You understand, boy? You always eat your sandwich first. Turns out one of the dinner ladies was a complete tyrannical cow. She was completely tyrannical, as I say. Nobody in the school actually liked her. I'm not going to use her real name, just in case she's still alive, but, you know, I don't want to risk it if she is. So I'm just going to call her Mrs. Kleb. So nobody liked Mrs. Kleb. And everybody hated her. She was... She was so, so strict. The thing I remember most is that she always made you eat your sandwich first. There was no... No... No leeway. It was always sandwich first, everything else afterwards. And you had to eat it quickly as well. If you didn't eat it quick enough, she would be on you in a flash. She ruled that dinner hall with an iron fist. So you can imagine how much joy there was at the end of my first year when it was announced that she was leaving. So the teacher, she sat us down on the rug and she said, OK, Mrs. Kleb is leaving. Now there's going to be a special leaving assembly and you're all going to sing a little song to her and you're all going to be nice for once. Oh, one more thing. She doesn't know she's leaving. Now I don't know much about this. She might have been forced into retirement or sacked or made redundant. But either way, she was going to lose her job. And she didn't know about it. And all the students of the school were going to sing a song to her. Now imagine you worked in an office and one day you were called in to see the boss. And this happens. Oh yes, yes, come in, come in, take a seat, take a seat. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I don't know quite how to tell you this, but, um... So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, adieu, goodbye! You sacked. This was exactly the same. Mrs. Kleb was to lose her job, and we'd all sing a song. But the even more stupid thing is, they told us this right before dinner. Absolutely hating this cow, I was... Yeah, I was up in the air. And when I queued up into the dinner hall, I couldn't help but celebrate. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's leaving, she's leaving, she's going away, she's leaving. Yeah, yeah, she's leaving. Unfortunately, while I was doing this, I was seen by a teacher. And she grabbed my collar, pulled me out of the line, for a ticking off. You there, boy. What are you doing? Are you celebrating the fact that Mrs. Kleb is leaving? Don't you know she's the other side of that door? She can hear you. She doesn't know she's leaving. Shut up. Now, I didn't think I was being that loud, but obviously I was. Obviously I was being loud enough that she could hear me. I don't think she did hear me, but that's not the point. I was obviously being very loud. 
and I nearly blew the whole jam wide open. Mind you, it is the school's own fault for number one, sacking her without telling her, number two, getting the students to sing a song at her, and number three, telling us right before dinner. <laughs>